All right, time for episode nine of Believe Me. I'm Joe Serralo, joined as always by the legends, Cordell Stewart, former Pro Bowl Pittsburgh Steeler quarterback, and Brandon Lang, the professional handicapper, who, of course, was portrayed by Matthew McConaughey in the movie Two for the Money. Gentlemen, let's take a look at last week. You guys keep going against my New York Giants. Cordell, you even had the audacity to call me a homer for taking the Giants, not just plus the three, you are. money line in Jacksonville. That one paid off, but Cordell, you had a great week, man. You were on Cincy. Brandon and I went, uh, went against you. You were on the Jets. I was with you there. You were on the Chiefs. I sided with you there as well. But Brandon, you had the Titans in that one against Indy. Titans are getting hot. We're going to get to that game this week. Cordell, how you feeling? Another victory Monday for you. Hey, man, I mean, you know, you got to act like you've been there before. You don't want to go, you know, you don't want to start dancing because, you know, you're not, you're only as good as you like your next game. You know, so we got to get this one done this week and keep this Learning. thing going. Hopefully we have this same conversation next time we'll be back Learning. on this thing again. So, you know, Learning. I'd like you bring that, baby. I can't, uh, you know, he's new to the point spreads. He's new to picking games. And I can't just come out of the box and destroy my boy. I just can't, you know, <laughs> listen, brandonlang.com, you know, that's my website. And, and you're always, that's where I, you know, make the brunt of my money. And yep. I'm having the college football season of a lifetime. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm 15 and four, including Ooh. 10 straight winners at brandonlang.com. Uh, last Saturday, and in fact, the last three have been underdogs that won outright. Kansas plus three and a half over Iowa State. Two weeks ago, Tennessee plus the points outright over Alabama. And then Oklahoma State at home plus seven beat Texas outright by seven. So um, thank God that college football is like just write a blank check and wait to cash it after I release my game on Saturday. But these NFL games on Sunday, I am, I am, man, I hope the quarterbacks I picked this week show up and don't throw interceptions at the goal line. And that's all I'm going to say right there, because you just, that's something you cannot do. So a um, couple quarterbacks are on my hit list. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that, that yellow wiffle ball bat is in the back seat of my car, not the trunk. Uh, Cause I will be back out in the LA and Bay area to take care of that wiffle ball, wiffle ball bat beating that's about to come down on a few folks. So let's get going. Cordell, congrats. Uh, enjoy it while you got it. Um, that's it. Let's go. That's well, Jimmy it. G, watch that's out it. for that wiffle ball bat. Let's start with two quarterbacks, Kyler Murray and Kirk Cousins, playing some football up in Minnesota this week. The Vikings, three and a half point favorites in this one. Arizona with an offensive outburst last week and a week and a half between games. Cordell, since you had another big week, we'll start with you again. Do you like the Cardinals as three and a half point underdogs here? Or are you going to roll with the five and one Vikings to win this one by four or more? I'm going with the cards. I like DeAndre Hopkins coming back into the fold. I'm not going with, you know, the home team. I tried it every once in a while. It worked. It didn't work. But I'm going with the reality. I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins is a guy that I think that's going to cause his defense to have to spread its wings because you can't cover him one on one. OK, and I, we know when it comes to Kyler Murray, if he can find a player. Yes, he had Hollywood Brown, but, you know, there's a height discrepancy. I mean, it, it's, it's not a bad thing. He's, he's played well, but when you have DeAndre Hopkins, you could throw the ball in double coverage. And how many times do we see him coming down with him? More times than not. Oh, yeah. I think that piece added to this game. That's why I think they played so well last game. Even though the defense put up two touchdowns, I think DeAndre Hopkins and his presence makes this team that much better. I'm going with the cards on the road. Brandon, the Vikes are 5-1, and one, but just 2-4 and four against the number. Arizona 2-0 and oh against the spread as a road dog this year. Which side of this game are you on? First of all, somebody better call 911 and send him to Andy Dalton House because that white boy's stealing money. <laughs> <I'm like>, <laughs> that red-headed white boy's stealing money. He's stealing money. Somebody get to the house right now. Great job at Arizona's defense to turn that around at the end of the first half. Great numbers here supporting Arizona across the board. Of course, Cordell noted uh, with Hopkins in the lineup, nine and two straight up their last 11. What a difference he makes for their offense. Uh, King, Kingsbury uh, in the underdog role. 16-5 and five, his last 21 when getting points, 7-1 when that team they're facing is coming off a win. You're getting three and a half. That's a great value number. I encourage and implore everybody that if you've not seen the first two-point conversion against the Raiders, go to YouTube and put it in. Kyler Murray literally goes for about three minutes and 45 seconds <laughs> and then runs it in. You have to watch it. You get tired watching it. It's unbelievable. I watched it on Instagram like 10 times before coming on the air. I like this team the way they're playing right now. Defense is getting better. Uh, and what I think is going to be a field goal game. I agree with Cordell. I, I, with Hopkins in the lineup, he makes all the difference in the world. I'm going to take the three and a half. The Vikes have a pressing need at cornerback too. Hopkins, just a matchup nightmare. Guys, you both, you're, you're on the same page. I love the page that you're on. Cards plus three and a half. 
Before we get to the next game, a quick little bonus bet. Brandon, this one's for you. Over under 49. I know unders have been king in the NFL this year, but last year they combined for 67, nearly 20 points more than this posted total. What do you think about over 49 in this one? You know, it's funny. It's, it's, it's a road game. It's an early game. You got a West Coast team going out playing an early game. Everything tells you it should go over. I just got this sneaky suspicion with the way this Arizona defense is playing. I think it's going under. I just, for whatever reason, I just get that gut feeling it's going under. But there's another total later on the show we'll talk about that I absolutely love. This one here, again, it's all about Kirk Cousins. Kirk plays a clean game, all systems go. But when do you have seen Kirk Cousins play a clean game? <laughs> He's always got a pick in there somewhere. Not too many this year. Brandon, we're going to start with you on the next one as well. Since the Titans were your one head-to-head -head winner against Cordell last week, they are two-and-a-half-point favorites in Houston. How do you see that one shaping up? Oh, the Texans were driving for the backdoor cover in Vegas. The pick six gave Vegas backers the above-the-number, excuse me, cover. Great numbers with Houston here. 6-0 to against the number as divisional dogs. After giving up 35 plus points, eight and zero oh against the number after allowing 35 more points are in their previous game. And the Titans are one and six against the number after a divisional home game. I don't trust Ryan Tannehill. Wife's got the gun on the private plane. It's all systems go. We're going to roll with the home dog Texans and Lovey Smith to get it done in Houston. Cordell, Brandon's going with the Texans in this one, but the Titans need to just win it by a field goal to cover. They've done that in four of their last five meetings against Houston. Which side are you on, Cordell? I only have covered two of the last five games when it comes to the Titans. So with that, I like the running game of what they're trying to do to control the line of scrimmage. But in this case, being at the Titans, the Texans are at home. Oh, man, gosh, darn it. You know, I mean, I could talk X's and O's all day, you know. I'll say I like to go with my man, Brandon. But you know what? For the sake of a great show, I'm going with the Titans, baby. I'm going with the running game. I'm going with Tannehill. I'm going with Mike Vrabel and what they're going to try to do on defense to try to stop them from getting anything. I think they kick a field goal. They win the game. I think they go up by one. I think they end up beating it. I think they end up winning by a touchdown. I give them a touchdown. How about that? I give uh, them a touchdown. I, I like really, the caller with the ball control. control. Really break that down and sell that game, Cardell. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Don't be mad at me because I'm hating. I'm winning this thing right now. But let's keep it going. You know, look, Tannehill's won four of the last five, Cordell, to your point. Ball control is a big factor here. Derrick Henry really hasn't found his groove, but if there's any team to do it against, it is Houston. Uh, Brandon, why, why are you so against the Titans here? I know you don't love Tannehill, but you don't I'm, think that they're, they've won four in a row. Not against them. It's just it's a situational play where you got a you got a live home dog that has been feisty and played some of its best football at home. I go back to the Chiefs and the Colts, where the Chiefs had no right losing that game at Indy, but Matt Ryan, who's now benched, figured out a way to beat the Chiefs. It's the same situation here. Home dogs in the NFL with those kind of numbers that I gave you, and the Titans are 0-6 in the stats this season. Did you hear me? They've been outgained in every single game this year by the half point. Take Houston up three and a half and feel good about going against Ryan Tannehill. Good luck with that, Cordell. We'll see you on campus. They have been outgained, yep. but they've won and covered four straight. Cordell, okay. I'm, I'm in Go your Cordell. camp on this one. Up on that couch. There it is. I'm jumping with Cordell <laughs> on this one. Hey, <laughs> let's, let's, let's go back to my Giants, fellas. The Giants are three-point dogs in Seattle. They just keep rolling. Six and one straight up. Six and one against the spread. Five and oh against the spread as an underdog. Brandon, is it time to hop on the Giants train? What's going on in your mind? The Giants are surprising. They really are. But if I were to tell you behind Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, who has the third best QBR in the NFL, who would you tell me that is? Geno Smith. In a Quarter million years, you wouldn't have said Geno Smith. And it is Geno Smith. To me, Geno Smith, he's balling. The Seahawks are literally the surprise team of the NFL. They let Russ go because they knew the only thing Russ was cooking was that crack. Sierra, give me that little <laughs> on spoon and light it. Get it in here. That's all we cooking. And the, you know what? Seattle knew it, shipped him, got five draft picks for it. How good do they look now? They're playing inspired football. Listen, sometimes you're late to the dance. I get that Giants have covered every game as an underdog this year. I get they're overachieving. I get they're the flavor of the month. But in Seattle, in that environment against this team i think people are going to jump all over the giants 
And I think people are going to be like, wow, the Giants finally lost. I'm going to buy the half point, and I'm going to take uh, Seattle down to two and a half and roll with the Seahawks. I'm riding with, ride with Brandon on this one. The thing that wow. I'm most impressed in, you know, I mean, it's okay. I'm just trying to be real smart here. I'm trying to work with you here. <laughs> See, Geno Smith has, I think, shocked the world, to be honest with you. Russell Wilson was actually the face of this organization yeah. for some time since the Legion of Boom has shut down. And how has that worked out for him? I think over the 10 years, he's been one of the most winningest quarterbacks in the history of the game. No one thought Geno Smith would come in. But in passing rating, he's behind two players, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomey. And that's playing pretty good. Pretty good. I don't think the Giants can hold on. You being a homer, that is. You. You aren't talking about Joe being a homer. I know you're going to ride with your Giants. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't know for sure if they can go to the 12-man stadium and actually get it done with Geno Smith playing the way he's playing. It's not turning the football over. It's not making the big mistakes. I think they get it done. I'm going with Pete Carroll and Geno Smith, that new relationship there in Seattle. You know what? Let, let me surprise you guys. You guys convinced me. Geno Smith's playing damn good football. Wow. Kenneth Walker <laughs> is running the ball really well. I said Kenneth Walker should have been the starting running back out the gate for Seattle. They have finally caught up to speed. They look like a good team. The one thing that does scare me a little bit with my Giants is that the Giants play a lot better as underdogs. They play a lot better on the road. But Geno Smith, the numbers are there. Your guys' points are there. Brandon, especially your point, buying the half point down to two and a half. I think it's a good call. I think these Seahawks are legit in a weak NFC West. Let's stick in that NFC West. The 49ers coming down to SoCal to take on the Rams, where there will surely be more 49er fans at SoFi Stadium than Rams fans. They are point and a half favorites. The three and four Niners at the three and three Rams. I don't think anyone thought these two teams would be so bad. And how about the Niners since 2017? Eight and three straight up and against the spread in the regular season against the Rams. Brandon, starting with you, what, what are your thoughts on this Shanahan McVay matchup part 12? You know, when you're a quarterback in the NFL and you decide to ask a porn star out on a date, <laughs> she better be the hottest porn star on the planet. Like the number one Jenna Jameson in her prime, just, just right? Jimmy G went out with a five, four buck, 60 little plump Asian and TMZ filmed it. And I hmm. mean, you can never trust a quarterback who went out with the plump Asian porn star. I'm sorry, boys. Are you saying she's like the fullback of porn star. We, we saw, we saw, I mean, she was attractive, but she <laughs> wasn't the dime piece. You should have been taken out. If you were an elite quarterback in the NFL, he can't be trusted. He can't, he proved it. Big time game, 14-13 uh, at the two-minute warning. Uh, first and goal at the four, and he figures a way to screw it up. That was game, set, match. Um, Niners bring an 0-4 record against the number before a bye week into this game. 1-7 straight up, 0-8 against the spread. Their last game eight, the last eight years. Um, it's Halloween weekend. Little boo, 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 boo going on with Casper the Friendly Ghost. Sorry, boys. I know I'm going against the trend, but I'm going to take the Rams at home. I think the love affair of Jimmy G is over. Their offensive line is banged up. Their defensive line is banged up. This team's got some problems right now. That was a big loss for them. And now having to face the Rams who are coming off that bye week, give me the Rams. Cordell, what do you think about this one? San Fran's had the Rams number since McVay and Shanahan took over. Who are you riding with? Well, Brandon sounds like he's pretty jealous about Jimmy G and his porn star letter. Negative, it's negative. Like, I've gone out like, with some porn stars and they've been done. Oh, pieces, of course, yeah, Brandon. I'm just saying. Okay. I, trust me, bro. That's a clown well, question, bro. Well, well, I, I'll say this straight up. Uh, the Rams are four and two against them straight up. Um, you know, I went against the Rams once before in this case. Uh, I think I'm going to ride with the Rams on this one. Oh, my um, God. I just think, I just, I just think. With what I've seen of Jimmy Garoppolo and this team as of lately, it really hasn't been too much of anything, to be honest with you. Whether it's defensive side of the football, not being able to make the proper stops to the offense, and Jimmy Garoppolo, whether it's turnovers or not running games not working like we've been accustomed to seeing the Shanahan offense actually operating. I just think when it comes to the other side of football, I think Coach McVay comes in with the confidence of knowing that they could beat this team, and I think they actually get the dub when it comes down to the 49ers and cover.
There you go. Rams, home dogs. You guys are both riding on them since 2017 with a rest advantage. They are 13 and four straight up, 10, six and one against the number under McVay. Guys, one more game before the game of the week, and that is Monday night football. The Cincinnati Bengals, just three point favorites at the Cleveland Browns. The Browns have stunk at home. They're just one and three at home against the number. Cincinnati, four and three on the year straight up, but they are five and two against the spread. They've covered five in a row. Cordell, does that trend continue? Do the Bengals go to Cleveland and beat the Browns by more than a field goal? Well, the Browns are 3-0 and against Joe Burrow, all right? And so that means they have, they have his number. But this, this Bengals team is really trending in the right direction. The Bengals are, and the Browns are actually going in the opposite direction. I'm going with Joe Burrow and the trajectory that I see them going in. Even though Joe Burrow has not, hadn't gotten an opportunity over the last three games to get a dub, I'm going with this offense and what they're able to do in this defense. And this team sees the light. They see the light in what they're trying to accomplish with how they played in the past. I'm going with the Bungles, as I remember them back when I played. Yeah, you and me both, Cordell. You sound like Brandon a little bit there, by the way. Maybe we've done too many shows together talking about seeing the light. Brandon, what do you think about this one? Bengals, three-point favorites going up north to Cleveland. That light, he must be must see, but I'm like pink, red in the room back in the day when he was in high school. I don't know about that. <laughs> on Monday nights, the last eight times on the Monday night road, the Bengals, one and seven against the number. Super Bowl losing teams. How about this away on Monday nights? 13 and 26 straight up, 14 and 25 against the number. It would seem to me that this game would come right down to the wire, probably decided by a field goal. Cordell, you should have advised your clients to take Cincinnati from that minus three and spend the extra 20 cents <laughs> and buy that down to minus two and a half. You a little freebie there. So that's what Cordell wants you to do, people. I am telling my clients, to spend the extra 20 cents, take Cleveland up to plus three and a half. Home dogs on Monday night. Be careful. They're feisty and they bark loud. Now I get it. Cincinnati's the only team in the NFL that's not allowed a second half touchdown all year long. And Jacoby Brissett, three and five and 13 is less 18 starts. Supports Cordell as well. But I just feel like Cleveland at home plus the points, the way to go getting three and a half. I think the game falls on a field goal. I think you win either way. Well, if you're at home and you got a really big set of what Bill Raftery would call onions, I think what you can do is take Cordell's advice and buy him down to two and a half, go with the Bengals, take Brandon, buy the Browns up to three and a half, and try to hit it from both sides. I wouldn't advise doing that, though. I'm with Cordell. I think that oh, recent... he said hit Ooh. it from both sides. <laughs> oh, I knew we were pick up on that yeah. one. I'm going to go with Cordell. I think that in this one, recent trends matter more than all-time Monday night trends. And I think the Bengals yes. are just playing great football and the Browns are simply not. We saw them get eviscerated by a really bad Patriots team that went out there and laid an egg against the Chicago Bears. Cordell, I'm with you. That takes us, gentlemen, to the game of the week. The Buffalo Bills, double-digit favorites, 10.5-point favorites at home against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. 22 of the Bills' last 29 regular season wins have come by double digits going back to the 2020 season. Brandon, let's start with you on the game of the week. Is this number too big? Sometimes you look at a game and it says trap. It just says trap. Let's go to this last Monday night game. When the whole world saw New England blow out Cleveland, shut out Detroit, and the whole world said the Bears stink, they can't win a game, their offense is horrible, let's just go with New England. I, Brandon Lentz, said, looks like a trap, smells like a trap, but it's a trap. Let's go with Chicago, plus that eight and a half. And I sit back with a cigar in my mouth going, man, this is nice. Zappy, zappy, jonesy, jonesy, zappy, jonesy, jones and zappy. Good luck with that man in the hoodie. This game here smells the same thing. Should the Buffalo Bills win this game 127 to 7? Absolutely. But Josh Allen lost to Green Bay 22-0 at Lambeau in 2018. Aaron Rodgers 7-0 against the straight up and against the spread versus teams coming off a bye. And 10-0 against the spread as an underdog in his NFL career if he has a win percentage less than 666 and the team he's playing is has a win percentage greater than 750. What does all that mean? His team is struggling. The other team is balling. And he's an underdog. What happens? R-E-L-A-X. Relax. I can't pass up Aaron Rodgers plus 10 and a half. I may get blown out, but it's the biggest underdog he has been in the history of his career. And I just got to think Bill's coming off that bye week, feel a little fat, feel a little, little, little glorious off that KC win. I just think Aaron Rodgers figure out a way to get it done. Cordell, give it to me, baby. Rodgers has no weapons. 
Bills winning this one by 11 or more, or do the Packers at least keep it to a single digit loss? And I will say it's all fitting to say the least when it comes to double digits in this team in Buffalo winning. You remember when you said it, they lost 22 to nothing? That's what happened with Josh. They lost 20. That was in Lambeau. They're playing in Buffalo. They're playing in New York. And trust me, on the road right now, I do not see Green Bay, whether it's he and whomever his head coaches and other assistants and teammates are, he's throwing everyone under the bus. No one's going to play for him. So the thing might be by 20 points. Who knows? But I know right now this Buffalo Bills team with this kid and, and Josh Allen, the way he's playing this running game, uh, the way this defense is balling out. I mean, it's just Coach Frazier has some people playing lights out football. I think it, it can get worse than what we're actually projecting it to be. I'm going with the Bills covering and then some. See, I knew the only reason why I picked Green Bay because I knew Cordell was going to go Buffalo. And, Joy, you were going to go Buffalo. And it didn't yeah, 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 of course. And so That's taxes and Cordell uh, picking Mahomes and the Bills, right? I, I mean, it's every week. <laughs> you know, the Bills went opening day to Los Angeles, and they beat the Rams. The game was – they were favored by two and a half. They beat them, what, 38-10? Next week, Monday Night Football, you think they're going to be hungover. They're double-digit favorites. Tennessee plus the points seems like the play. They beat them 41-7. I, just, I, I don't think there's a number big enough to stop the Bills right now. Cordell, I think you're right, man. I think it's Bills minus 10 and a half, as crazy as a number as that seems like. I know. Not I, 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 hey, did, all, all I know is, is, is when watching Aaron Rodgers, it's always something wrong with everyone else but himself. And to actually get what you're asking for from this team, being able to play – with this edge or this chip or, or being an underdog and the biggest being the biggest underdog in you know probably what? the history of him. You know playing. what? I'm changing I'm my pick right now. I'm changing my pick right now. Whoa. You know why? Because I don't, I can't stand Aaron Rodgers. I can't <laughs> stand him. I can't stand the, the way he puts his chin strap up and that little smug beard. And you know what? Screw the 10 so and 0 spread, 7 and 0 against the spread. I'd rather root for Green Bay to get blown out. Than me going against Buffalo. Um, let's you know what trifecta. We're all on Buffalo, baby. I love it. <laughs> Game of the week. That's what they're meant for. This is a first in the nine episode right. history of Believe Me, gentlemen. If you can keep it to 20 seconds each, you'll be my favorite people in the world. Give me that bonus game, that bonus pick of the week, Brandon. You've been killing it. Let's start with you on the bonus game. Bears plus 10 and a half over the Cowboys. Like I said, when I used them on Monday night over the Patriots, they've been in every single game this year. So you, you have a body of work, six games in six games, playing hard defense, playing fantastic. Eight and a half point dog wins the game outright. Dak rusty looked horrible against Detroit. Bears are going to go in there and play. Give me the Bears plus 10 and a half. Cordell, what's your bonus pick? It. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, as crazy as it sounds. My man's right with his boy this week. I picked the Bears. No, I the Bears. I, promise on, to God, I got it written down on this piece of paper right here in front of me. I got the Bears, bro. All I'm saying is, is this is Justin Fields' time, I think, to actually get on the grand stage, whether it's Monday night, Sunday night, Thursday, or just Sunday. I think he comes out and he shocks the world going the road. He actually covers this thing and ends up beating Dak Prescott because as we've seen and as we alluded to, Dak is struggling. It doesn't look as clean as we thought. I'm going with the Bears. All this agreement's either going to be really good or really bad, but that was a hell of an episode. <laughs> for Brandon Lang, for Cordell Stewart, I'm Joe Serralo. We'll see you next week for the 10th episode of Believe Me.